Let me ask a couple questions. This is a class on coaching, theory, coaching. What do y'all, what, what kind of things do, do, are we learning in this class? Whatever the speaker tells us. All right. What to do and what not to do. What to do and what not to do. Somebody give me a reason why you're going to want to coach. Somebody just raise your hand and tell me why you want to coach. Love kids. Love kids. All right, what else? Uh, what? I don't know. Oh. Love the sport. Love the sport. Any other things? Influence. Influence. All those are great reasons. The biggest thing I think you need to do to be a good coach is love your sport and love your kids. Love your sport and love your kids. If you're in it for the money, forget it. Okay, if you think, come on in. If you think you're going to make a lot of money coaching, then probably you're not, you know, you're, you're in over your head. Um, I got last, well, it's actually 2017. Um, the coaching supplement for Dorman High School. Dorman High School is known for one of the, be one of the more elite schools, right? So you would think they would pay the most, which they probably do. So somebody give me an idea what you think a first year basketball coach would make at Dorman High School. Just a supplement now, just, all right? So you're gonna get your teaching supplement, which is, you know, if a first year teacher, if you're a first year teacher, what would that be, 40 maybe? About forty thousand, yeah, forty thousand dollars. First year teacher. All right. So how much more are you going to get for spending your countless hours basketball? Six thousand. Okay. Anybody two, else? Two grand. I was going to say two. Okay. It's forty-eight. Okay. So four thousand eight hundred dollars. Okay. Now that's basketball. All right. So let's say, um, let's see, gymnastics is three. Uh, soccer is four, so about four thousand dollars. If you figure that into the hours that you're going to spend working, that's not a lot of money. All right. So instead of forty thousand dollars, you'll get forty-four thousand dollars. All right. Taxes taken out and all that. That's not going to be that much money. So please don't ever go into coaching. All right, for the love of the money, because. You're going to have to stay in it many years before you ever get any money. Um, for instance, myself, I started at Dorman High School. Okay, that was my first school that I went to. So I came out of college and went to Dorman. I think they gave me two thousand um, to coach volleyball and JV basketball. That's where I started out. Two thousand dollars to do both. So I got to go one. So two thousand dollars isn't a great amount of money, but it was okay. Um, and, you know, I thought, grand expectation. Well, luckily, after two years, I got the opportunity to come here, okay? So, two years. To come here to be, and, you know, this is a lot of discrepancy that people don't understand is, a lot of times you can go up in level, like I came to a college, we were a junior college then, and I got a, I had to take a $3,000 pay cut. Okay, to, I was full-time faculty, I was head basketball, I was head volleyball, and I had to teach swimming and be the lifeguard all summer. And I took a $3,000 pay cut to come here. Okay, so, but I could see that this was a place that I wanted to go and at more of the level I wanted to be at. Um, you know, because as a coach, you've got to be a teacher, you got to teach your sport, you got to be a strategist. You got to figure out, you know, your X's and your O's and who's the best player and what's the best player. And how can you do that? You got to be a counselor because you're their, their mama and their daddy. Because a lot of times you're going to see the kid more than their mama and father, mama and dad, right? A lot of times you're going to spend more face to face time with them than their mother or father. Um, and so there are going to be some days that you just, you know, you wake up and your head's just swimming. I don't know how many times I woke up and, you know, what am I going to do today? Who am I going to put where? What, what, you know, oh, no, the pressure. You're going to have so much pressure on you sometimes. And it's self-pressure. It's most of it's self-pressure. Um, the sleepless nights, 
that you're going to have, you're going to lose a big game, and you're just going to, you know, you're going to be play, replaying, I should have took my time out, I should have done this, I should have done that, I should have said this, you know. Your team's going to be days of depression, you know. And that's crazy to think that you're coaching a bunch of youngsters, and, you know, it could be little ones, or it could be college, and you're going to be depressed over something they did. But I can I can just remember times that I remember one night I was just so depressed because we lost the game, and I just went outside and sat out in the cold on the ground just looking up at the sky saying, why? Why? You know? And so there's going to be those days. But that's not to say it's not great, too, because then you're going to have the super highs, all right? You're going to all of a sudden win some big games, and you're going to think you're on top of the world, that nothing could be better. And it's not, Okay? Because those are, you know, so it's a roller coaster. Great highs, you know, unless you're really, really good, then you're going to have the super lows. You're going to have the great highs and the super lows. Um, but the impact that you can make on each and every person that you coach is awesome. The impact that you can be, you can shape somebody's life. You can turn somebody's life around for the good and the bad. You can make somebody want to love your sport. Or you can make somebody hate your sport just by the way you treat them. Just by the way that you present yourself. And that's where you have to be very careful because you are molding somebody. You are, you've got them in your hand and you've got to take special care of them that you don't push too hard. Because if you push too hard, bad things happen. Okay? If you open your hands too wide and don't push at all, they can fall out. So you've got to find that perfect mixture where they sit right there in your hand and that way you can control and, and mold them the way you want. Um, so how do you get into it? Well, the big thing is the more experience you can have, the better. So if you want to be a basketball coach, okay, playing basketball is probably the best way to get some experience, but it's not all the experience you need. You know, if you don't play basketball, you need to ask to be a student assistant, even a student manager. Maybe start as a manager. You need to learn the ropes. You need to learn. Every day, every, every good coach is always learning. Every good coach is always learning. You, you know, you need to be looking for that extra drill that might work on them. You need to look at how and motivating, I might be able to motivate them by doing this. You know, um, Pat Head Summit was one of people I looked at all the time. Pat Head Summit, and um, I love Dean Smith, who was at North Carolina, Roy Williams, I like him at North Carolina. Um, so you gotta kinda have your, your people you look to see what they did. I, I remember one time uh, my team was playing awful, okay? They, they, they were in this slump. And let me say this about when your team starts losing. When your team starts losing, everybody complains. Everybody, your players gonna complain, their parents are gonna complain. You can't do anything right. Okay? It's just the way it is. You and they come out of the woodwork complaining. So you have to sometimes do something drastic to change it. So anyway, this time we were playing terrible. And so I said, Y'all are so bad right now that you don't deserve to wear the practice uniform. You don't deserve the locker room, you know, and until you start playing better, all those things are taken away. So they had to, you know, we have nice practice stuff, so they had to, I took that up, they, they had to practice in their own clothes, we wore pennies, and you know, everybody hates wearing pennies, right? We don't like wearing pennies. So they had to wear pennies to tell the difference in the team, and then they didn't have a locker room, so, we sat out in the hall. Half time, we sat in the hall. Okay? You know what? I had some parents complain great. I mean, they were, how in the world could you do that? All of a sudden, we started playing like champions. Went to, um, we, in fact, we won the region that year. But I knew that team had something that they weren't. And what happened was, they started, and this sounds bad, but this is the only thing I can figure. They started hating me so much that they got together because they were pulled apart. So, you know, there was all, ah, 
And so then it kind of gathered them together. So sometimes you got to do drastic things, okay, to get them back into your fold. Um, but, and all that was to say, have somebody you look up to. What are some other ways you can learn? How else can you learn the game? Watching it. Watching it, okay? Why would you want to be a basketball coach if you don't like to watch basketball? You wouldn't, would you? Because as a basketball coach, you're going to have to watch probably thousands of games in a year. Thousands, okay? Because you've got to watch scouting games. And then, you know, you just like some recreation games because I still love to watch um, ACC basketball. That's my favorite thing. I don't hardly miss an ACC basketball game if I can help it. I would come back from a basketball game and, you know, if we had the ability, I'd watch a basketball game on the bus coming back, you know. So you've got to love the sport. You've got to want to watch that sport. You've got to grow from that sport. Because you can, if you're really observant, you can learn a lot from watching a game, can't you? Sure you can. If you're watching a football game, you want to be a football coach, and you go, hey, I like the way they set that. You know, you may want to freeze frame that. What did they just do? Okay? And then you want to draw it up. I like that. All right? So you're always needing to learn. Okay? Watch as many games as you can. And volunteer everywhere you can volunteer to start off with. How many of you have already coached? Okay? Where have you coached? Uh, different camps. Okay? Uh, I guess summer teams. All right? High school. Okay? Regional high school. All right? All right, that's wonderful. You need to coach. You need to be coaching. This is the time of your life you need to get in to sit and coach whatever way you can. Um, I was a sophomore, I think, in high school, and I started coaching a, a little girl softball team. So, you know, the, the more you can coach, the more you learn how to coach. Because it's not that as easy as you think, is it? In controlling everybody and organizing everything. Um, but you cannot volunteer and anything too small. It may be you want to coach a church league, okay? Coach the little girls or boys in the church league, all right? So watch, learn, listen, okay, and observe. Watch, learn, listen, observe. Um, then you gotta start thinking about your coaching portfolio, okay? Because when you go for a job, they're gonna wanna know, what's your coaching style? What's your, you know, do you have a portfolio? Do you? Do you know how you want to do things? Okay. What are your standards? What are your expectations? Okay. What do you expect for somebody if, if you're teaching or coaching a high school uh, team? What are your expectations for your players? Are you going to let them just do the bare minimum? Are you going to try to push them to be even better? Um, so those are big things. Then you need to know... All right, what kind of offensive schemes do I want? What kind of defensive schemes would I like to do? If I'm the coach, what offensive schemes am I want, going to want to be out there? What kind of defensive schemes? Um, am I a man-to-man? -man? Am I a zone? Am I a switching it up? Am I press? Okay. All that's important because you can't just show up one day and do it, okay, without ever thinking about it. You've got to have this in your mind. What kind of team rules do you have? What are some good team rules that you meet? What do you think? What, what's a good team rule? No swearing. No swearing, okay. Be on time to practice. Be on time. That's, that was one of my big ones, okay? Mine was if you're on time, you're late, okay? You're five minutes early or you're late. You know, that, that was just, that's just me. What, what's some other team rules? Fresh when you get the equipment. Okay, fresh when you get the equipment. I always did that one too. Everybody loves everybody. Okay, get along. Okay, get along. A lot of people say what goes on in the locker room stays in the locker room, right? You don't go hash it out. So you need to, you know, and you, by the time you start coaching, hopefully you've played enough and you've been around it enough um, that you've kind of, I like this team rule, I don't like this team rule. I think this one works, I don't like this one. This is a little hard, all right? 
So you need to know that. And then, what are you going to do if a, team, if a player breaks a team rule? You know, um, back in the old days, we could really be harsh on, on people. You know, when I first came here, we, I lived down in uh, the apartment. And so we had curfew on game night. And at 10 o'clock, they were supposed to be in. And I'd walk up there and I'd walk through the dorms, knock on the door. If they weren't in, then I would, I'd say, I'd leave a note to see at 6 a.m. And then I'd take them up to the um, stoplight down there, put them out of the car, and say, I'll see you when you get back. And then I had to start going about mm, the next ride, watch them run by, because they started getting in cars with people. So, <laughs> so, so, you know, we'd make them run all the way back, you know, and then, then, you know, it's up to, do you let them play that night or do you not let them play if after they've run four miles or whatever? So, um, so, you know, you've got to make your own team rules and you've got to go, but here's the thing. It's easier to start tough and then get a little bit easier than to start out easy and try to go tough. And that's a big thing I didn't know at first. I think that's one of the big things I learned was that try to start out tough at the beginning and then if you need to ease up, you can. All right? Because as you know, as, as a person, you're, you, you learn kind of what they do and then you're going to balk. Also, the thing you need to learn is if you're young and you're about the same age, because I started here uh, at North Greenville at 23. Okay, so I was 23 years old when I started here. So I wasn't a whole lot different than, than everybody else. So you have to set yourself at a different standard. You don't want to try to be their friend. You, you want to be friendly, you want to, you, but you, ha, you can't be friend to friend. Why? Why is that bad, you think? Why don't you want your best friend coaching you? Favoritism. Okay, favoritism, definitely. Right? Maybe they can get away with more stuff. Right, right. Well, you, you, know, you know, I, I just was a few minutes late, you know, and then, and then they, they don't respect you, do they, when you come down hard on them. So that's always when you start out young, it's a little bit difficult, is that you've got to make sure that you stay on top of it and, and try to set yourself at a little bit higher level. Um, you know, they're going to say, hey, well, who you co who, you know, this, you know, you know they want to know about your social life and, and well, we're going out to do this. No, I don't want to go out with you, okay? So you've you got you to gotta handle that, and that's hard to do first-year coaches. Okay, very hard to do. Um, so all this stuff has to be working in your brain of how you're going to be a coach. Um, you have to be a great communicator. You have to be able to tell what you want because you want to be able to tell a, a drill and explain a drill and then be able to show the drill and let them do it. If you can't communicate, it makes it a lot harder. If you can't communicate with players, it makes it harder. If you can't communicate with the parents, it's going to make life. So practice speaking, okay? Don't be one of these who don't ever like, want to be, you know, I don't want to speak up because you need to learn how to talk and to present yourself. Um, you need to be able to communicate with the athletic director of why you want more money. You've got to be able to communicate with anybody, you know, if you're out fundraising, why, why we need more money? Why do you need to give us more money? Um, and also, it's a great time that you can communicate your faith in God. You know, and you think, well, I'll be at a high school. Well, think of Dabo, okay? Does, does everybody know Dabo pretty much is a Christian, a big Christian? Sure. He's not, he's not ashamed of it. He speaks it out. He tells people. He uses that as a big resource. Okay? So don't ever be ashamed of your faith because, there again, you're molding that person. You can make a big difference in their life just by show, showing them your faith okay, and telling them how, how you feel and what you believe and why you feel that way. Why is God so, so awesome? Um, and then... When you're a coach, you have to be flexible, okay? Flexibility. 
Why, why is, and I don't mean I can bend my head back like this, arm back. What do I mean by that? Flexibility. Being able to switch things up on the fly. Be able to switch things up on the fly. Exactly. If you've got a full court drill going and all of a sudden some of the maintenance guy says, I've got to come in and put this light bulb in. Okay? And you've got to go to half court. Can you switch that quick? All right, now let's go right over here. Okay, um, if um, you're supposed to do go at three and all of a sudden somebody comes in and says, hey man, I, I really need to switch with you. Can we go at six? Well, you go at six and we'll, we'll, we'll take your practice. You gotta be able to go with that, okay? Flexibility. Um, flexibility in a game. All of a sudden you're going with the, something you thought was gonna work perfect and it doesn't, okay? Somebody gets hurt. Next man up, okay? Who's the, who's the next person that's going to go? Who can go in there? Um, and then be able to take care of your athletes. That's key. How are you going to take care of your athletes? Are you going to be somebody that's concerned about that? Because, you know, a lot of times you're not going to have a big-time athletic trainer ho hovering over your team telling you exactly what you need to do, you know? Here we got trainers and they'll say, no, 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 you do this, you know. But most of the time, you're going to be the one taping ankles. Okay, a lot of times you're going to be the one taping ankles. Do you know how to tape ankles? Okay. You're supposed to take an athletic training course, right? So you, so don't just do it one time to pass the test. You need to know how to do that because I can guarantee you it will have to be done by you probably. All right. I'd like to know how many ankles I've taped with stinky feet. All right. Um. First aid. Can you give first aid? If somebody goes down, are you going to know what to do? Okay. Can you can you administer first aid? All right. Or should you administer first aid? Or if their heart stopped beating? Okay. Or if they're laying there unconscious, what are you going to do? Right. 911 takes five minutes to get here at least. Okay. There's no trainer around. They're over at the football field. You're on the basketball court. What are you going to do? you got to do something. So you better know your CPR. Okay? You better know what, what you're supposed to do. You better know where that AED machine is so you can get to it immediately. Because these things happen. Okay? They happen. Where somebody runs into the wall and their head split wide open, blood gushing, what are you going to do? You know? Who are you going to do? What, what are you going to do first? You're going to check on them? You're going to get, you're going to call 911? You're going to try to get something to stop the bleed? You know, all those things. You got to, you got to make an immediate decision. And, and that's key. All right. That may be key to that person's life. So be aware that, you know, little things don't just, you know, when you go through first aid thing, eh, because you never know. You never know when that's going to be needed. Um, nutrition. Okay. Could you talk about nutrition? Sure. Sure. Your players being able to play the best may require you to say, hey, what do you eat? Okay. Are you drinking Mountain Dews and eating fried burgers every day before the game? You know, maybe we can change that up. Maybe you, you know, you won't be, be cramping as much. All right. So you may have to talk about your nutrition. Hydration, okay? Um, we always did a thing um, in basketball. They would shoot free throws. If they missed, they had to run, okay? If they made it, they get to go get water. We always call it hydrate or die, okay? Hydrate or die. So you'd either have to run a suicide or you had to, got to have a water break. But they all got a water break after that. So you always have to have, put that into your time of practice and make sure that Especially if you're outside in the hot on a summer day having to coach football, you got to have a lot of hydration time, don't you? You have to be able to, hey, get water, get water, get water. We don't need heat stroke. Hey, you're looking a little wobbly. Go drink water. All right? So you got to know this and keep everybody up to date. And, you know, you try, hey, trainer, what, what's him? I'm not sure about him. All right? So there again, things to think about as you start your coaching career. How are you gonna handle it? Um, mentally is probably the hard, one of the hardest things, I think, is how do you handle each and every person? Because everybody's different, aren't they? 
how do you push their buttons to get them to play the best? You know, if Jamie Sue stinks right now, how can I get Jamie Sue playing good? What's it going to take? Do I need to, you know, scream and holler, nah! or do I need to go up and give a hug and say, hey, man, you got it. What's up? What's up? You got this. You know, how can, how can you push but also encourage? You know, hey, that was a great run, but I bet we can do even better. I bet we can do it better than that. Okay? So, even, so you don't, you don't want to dig them so far in the hole that they feel like they can't pull themselves out. But you want to motivate them. Okay? Um, and motivation, ah, oh, lady, that, that's where you have to learn each and every player. And that's where you have to really get in with them and push them and see what works best for them. Um, then you got to worry with that, you know, you got to know what am I going to do when that, when I have this group on the team and fighting this group on the team? Have y'all ever been on a team like that where that it was like button heads all the time? Yeah, that, and I'm going to tell you, girls are worse than guys on that. Okay? Girls are worse than guys. Guys, you know, guys will just punch each other and go on with it. Right? And they'll be over it. If a girl ever hits another girl, no, I'm not talking to her anymore. No. She is history to me, you know, and they want, they don't ever want to get along with you. So you got to be able to control that. Um, and then it's the problem solving. You got to solve more problems than you'll ever think of. What do you think of some problems? If y'all are a coach right now, what are some problems your coach is having to figure out right now? Playing time. Okay, playing time. What else? Recruiting. What? Recruiting. Recruiting, yes. Recruiting. Budget. Should I recruit this person or this person? Money. Do I have the do I have the money to recruit this person versus this person? I think I can get this person for five thousand. This one's want ten. But this one may be a little bit better. Okay? So it's on the college level, it really jacks up into how hard it is problem solving. Okay, what else? what other problems? Field time. Field time. Okay. In the gym. In the gym right now, we have men's basketball, women's basketball, men's volleyball, women's volleyball, and cheerleading, intramurals, and PE class. And free play. When can you get all those people in there? Okay, That's, that gets difficult, doesn't it? Okay, so somebody's got to come up with a system of, all right, what's fair for everybody? Okay, so it's, you... The men don't just always get the prime time anymore, you know. When I first came to North Greenwood, men got everything and women got whatever was left. But luckily, that's changed. So, you don't think it's changed that much? <laughs> but then you have problems with parents. You have problems. What do you do if um, John dropped below 12 hours or, or John fell in a class? Okay. Hey, my best player one time at midterm had all S. All American. She was an all American at midterm, had all S. You know what I did? Cut her. Nope. The next the next three months, I was in study hall with her three hours a night. I myself was in study hall. We would go over what I'd have her teach her. Did, what does she need? You know? So sometimes it, it boils down to that. Okay? Are you willing to do that? You know? If I hadn't saved that person, okay, then she could have never have moved on up to the level she got. It just took her to learn how to learn. Because in college, a lot of times that's, that's it, isn't it? Okay, learning how to learn. Um, problems right now we're having COVID. Oh my goodness. All the protocols, all the problems that we're having. You know, you know, right now, men's and women, nobody can use a locker room, right? Did y'all know that? Nobody can use locker rooms. So where do the men and women change clothes? They got their practice gear on. On the field. Yeah, yeah. So um, how are you going to do that? How are you going to, you know, all the problems that, that come. And, you know, who would have ever thought this would have happened, right? 
Never in my wildest dreams would have ever thought that, that we would all be wearing masks, all right? That you're supposed to try to play basketball with a mask on, all right? You're, try, you're trying to breathe while you're run, running up and down the court with a mask on. But that's what we got to we got a problem solve. Now we got a problem solve how to get tests. So to play, we've got to be tested, all right? So that's something other people are worrying about more than the coaches, but how are we going to get everybody tested? Um, certification. What kind of certifications do you need? Okay, there's an NCA test that you have to have, true. Okay, what else? CPR, all right? You gotta know CPR. You gotta know where the how to use the AED machine. All right. Each sport can be a little bit different. Like in in certain high schools at in certain states, you have to be certified for that sport. I've even seen little league where you have to pass stuff to be a little league coach or a li uh, what do you call a little football kid. All right. Yeah, that you have to have that for just to coach the little small kids. Um, so you got to always make sure you stay up with your certification, right? Because you definitely want that. Because And why is that important? Because you don't ever want somebody to be able to come back and sue you because you weren't certified or something, okay? You let that person die that fell out there because you didn't pay attention in CPR, okay? You didn't know what to do, okay? That could probably be an issue. All right, that could probably be an issue. You didn't even try to do anything. Um, tryouts, okay, tryouts are one of the most stressful times you can have in the high school, okay? Because just think, you need 20 players at the most and 120 to come to tryouts in basketball. And that happens all the time, okay? So, you've got to be able to watch that and pick out your 20. Now, you're going to know some of them, okay? Some of them played before. But, but say you only want to pick out five new freshmen that are going to... So, how are you going to do that? First thing, be extremely organized, okay? Be extremely organized in how you're handling it. Because you don't want people running around wild... I'm trying to watch laps of here, and these people are shooting jump shots here, and these people, no, you be, you've got to be able to eyes on and doing something so that you can grade them. Okay, I'm going to give them a grade, yep, okay. So that can be very stressful, but being organized is going to help you a lot. So what are you looking for? Be able to look at that and see what you're you're looking at. Then how are you going to cut them? Okay, how how'd they cut at your school? Did they make a list? Okay, make a list, all right? Okay, made a list and posted it on the door. I don't know, is that what we do today? Do what? They told you in person, said you're in, you're out? They were like, they were like, they were like you gotta click over here and watch and they're like, oh. yeah, same thing. See, it, and that can be, that can be, just think what that can do to somebody's soul that gets cut. So how, how are we going to, you know, and I don't know what the answer is now because I, luckily I don't have to cut anymore. But that's something that you would, if I were you, I would go and, and talk to all the other coaches in your school and see how they do it, okay? Because, you know, I know when I did it, they just posted who made the team, okay? And you could go walk in sometime. You didn't have to be around anybody. You could just see your name was on the list or not. That still seems like probably the best. But, and I've heard that you, you made it, you didn't, you made it, you didn't. And I, I can't imagine how bad that is. All right, I, I, so be aware of that. Um, and then you have to plan your practice, okay? Everybody thinks coaching is just showing up that hour, two hours that you're on, on the field floor, whatever. There's so much more that goes into that, okay? You've got to, first you've got to set up your whole, air, okay, so, all right, I got two weeks before my first game. All right, we got to put in an offense, okay? We got to put in offense B, and we got to put in offense three. We got to have a zone defense and a man-to-man -man defense, all right? We got to have a press, 
we got to have, let's see, we got to have at least five inbounds plays. All right? You got to have all this scheduled so that you know that on day A, okay, or day one, we're going to do A and B. And on day two, we're going to get to something else. And then you got to keep going over it once you teach it to make it memory. Because if you ever teach something and you expect them to learn it and know it the next day in a game, it's going to be different. You need to repeat it, all right? So if you're going to do an inbounds play, all right, they need to do it, you know, six, seven days in a row to get it to memory. Because when that stress comes, if it's down to the last minute, and you say, all right, run, who go, who go, all right? And everybody's going, oh, oh, oh. you're in trouble, <laughs> all right? You're in trouble. They got to know, boom, I know where I'm going, okay? So it's got to be instantly they know that they do that because you've taught it and you've retaught it and you've gone over it and you've gone over it again so that it's known in their head, okay? So don't fuss at people for not knowing something that you didn't teach them and teach it well, okay? Don't, don't be upset when they don't remember it because you didn't teach it well, all right? Um, so, what skill, all right, so we're gonna work on rebounding today. All right, what skill and drill, we got the skill, but what drill do I need? There's thousands of drills, right? Thousands. You know, but what drill is, is really going to work on your play? What drill? And it, sometimes you want to do drills, the same drill, several days, if not every day. And some drills you want to do sporadically just to get a special, a little bit of, you don't want people to get bored, okay? Because every time you teach a new drill, it gets a little more excitement, right? But it may not be as good as you want, but it's going to put a little more, they're going to have to think a little harder. So, um... And then you gotta go over game situations. All right, all right. We got, we're, we're down two and we got 20 seconds. This is what we wanna run. And a lot of times you even gotta practice, all right, I'm gonna draw up something, boom. All right, this is what we're gonna do. Go do it, go do it, hurry, hurry. And you gotta put pressure on right then in practice. Why? Why do you wanna do it in practice? Simulate game pressure. Simulate game pressure. Okay, simulate game press. You got to do this. If, if you don't do this, your team runs. All right. So you might, you know, you your team's gonna run extra. All right. So you put that pressure on them because you'd rather pressure me in a in a practice so that they're used to it in game situations. Right. So you want to everything you do. You got to have a purpose for doing it. You can't just go out there and free play. You can't just go out there and say. All right, if you want to be good, you can't, all right? You can't just go out there and say, oh, don't worry about it, all right? We'll, we'll just scrimmage today. Well, perfect practice makes perfect. Practice doesn't make perfect. If you're, per if you're not practicing perfectly, does it? I could shoot like this every day, okay? And do it thousands of times. That don't mean I'm going to get good at it, okay? Because it's... Nothing perfect about it. You know, I have to do perfect practice to be perfect. And so that's what you want to make sure that, that you're correcting the little mistakes. Okay, correct the little mistakes that you're doing. Um, and we talked a little bit about, you know, knowing what you're going to do, but have your goals. Why are goals in, important? Okay. Yeah, how do you know what you want if you don't have a goal? How do, how do you know, you know, as a player even, how do you know what you where you want to be if you don't have a goal? Is your goal to be on a team? Is your goal to be a starter? Is your goal to be an all-conference? You know, you've got to set realistic goals for your team. And you've got to communicate these goals so that, we're all on the same path. Because once you take your eye off the goal, it's easy to get going different directions. Um, how many of you ride a bicycle? All right, so, and by that, think, when, I used to mountain bike a lot, all right? And you had to have your eye 
on where you wanted to go, the line that you wanted to take that mountain bike through rocks and jumps and trees and all that. And if you ever looked over here at this rock, okay, because of the big rock right there, what happens to your bicycle? I go toward that rock, all right? So it's the same way. you got to keep your eyes on the goal. And for that to happen, you've got to have your goals and you ought to be posted and you look at it and you communicate it all the time. Um, and then be a good role model. I think this is so important. You know, some, so many people don't want to be role models, right? You hear, well, I don't want to be a role model. But as a coach, you are a role model. People are going to look at you. They're going to decide, what is it I like about you? Okay. Do I respect you? And why? Okay. What is your role? What? How do you dress? Do you dress like a slob? Okay. You know, that, that's the first thing I always think is a, a good role model, especially in coaching and teaching, is that you ought to dress like a professional. You know, you, you need to dress like a professional. You need to act like a professional if you're going to be a professional. And a coach is a profession. And you need to count it as a profession. Um, because, like I said, you're going to mold a lot of lives. You're going you're gonna to have to do, and, and what you make, is going to make a lasting impact. You know, I, I talk to my some of my players all the time, and there's certain things that happen, and, and you know, it still makes an impact on their life. How many of you know, have had a coach, and something they did or said made an impact on your life? Sure. Let me tell you what made an impact on my life. I was, I was a decent basketball player, right? I, I was the, the one they went to to score points. And so we lost in the conference championship. And my coach, we're sitting there, it was the last game, we lost out my senior year. And my coach takes, he's looking at the clipboard. He threw the clipboard at me and said, look at these stats, Char. Because I hadn't played yet. You know, boom, right? Just cut off your heart, just cut it open. So that's what kind of impact, and I could almost tear up still about that. You know, it's been hundreds of years ago. You know, but it but it still makes impact. So what you say and do can make such an impact on a person. So don't ever don't ever rip their heart open. Okay, even though it might make you feel better, I'm sure he. <laughs> yeah, I threw the clip on her. You know, might have made him made him feel better. But it sure didn't help me any, you know? It sure didn't help my heart. It didn't help me in any way. So be aware of that. Um, but coaching is such a great thing, okay? So much, so much fun. I can't imagine doing anything but wanting to be a coach. I wanted to be a coach since the third grade. Third grade, I decided I was going to teach PE and I was going to coach something. I didn't care what it was. Okay? I didn't care what it was. And I ended up being the volleyball coach, the basketball coach, and assistant softball here. All right? I didn't care. I just wanted to be a part of it. And it, it is a wonderful thing. Start getting your, your education toward coaching. Start learning about drills. You know, you ought to, if you want to coach football, you ought to be writing up drills that you do in practice all the time so that you remember, I really like this drill. You need to start now because someday you're going to say, what was that drill? And you're not going to remember. You know, what did they do? So you need to start now preparing to be a coach because so much is going on right now that you can just gain tons and tons of information. But you've got to step out and want to learn. You've got to step out and observe and want to do that. Um, so the last thing is, be aware that you're going to be the do-it-all person if you're a coach. You're going to probably have to do it all. You're going to be the janitor. Okay? Right now, everybody in the gym cleans toys. Every coach in the gym right now cleans toys and mops the floor. You know why? Because the school needs us to. They need extra cleaning during COVID, so we're doing it. Every, in fact, every coach is clean. So, you, you know, you may have to be the bus driver. I remember my first job, 
I didn't know anything about driving a van. I, I never driven anything but a little Pinto, you know, a little bitty car. And they gave me the car key says, um, you're going to Union High School today from Dorman. I said, I don't know how where Union is. They said, well, look at the map. You know, all of a sudden, all that pressure is on you. So, so be ready. You, you may, you know, and luckily things have changed a little bit, but it still may be on you. Um, you know, you may, you're going to be the disciplinary. You're going to have to watch social media. You're going to have to do all that stuff to keep your team in line. But just know that you can do it and just be pre prepared to do it. That they have put something on you, I can do it. Coaches are always the first one to have to do bus checks in high schools and elementary schools. Y'all know that? For some reason, they, they always want them to do bus checks or whatever at elementary schools where you help people off the bus and all that. So, you know, it's just, it's just one of those things. But people, you know why? Because people respect you and know you can get it done. They know that coaches can get it done. So that's what you got to believe in, that whatever it is, I can do it. Just give it to me, give me the responsibility, and I can handle it. All right? All right. Well, we take some questions. For All right, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Questions now. How many points did you average back in the day? Um, college or high school? Uh, college. College was 21. <laughs> so, yeah. In fact, just to let you know, I'm the only Jersey at Western Carolina University hung up. Really? Yes, sir. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, and the women's side. Um, so you talked about, like, uh, not ripping kids' cards out. So, like, if you make that mistake, how do you, like, make amends with that or, like, find resolution if you, like, hurt a kid like that? You know, I, because it was our last game, I don't know that I ever talked to my coach again, really. Mm -hmm. And I think if he would ever just said, you know, it was the heat of the moment. I really apologize. I shouldn't have done that. You know, I feel bad about it. I suffered all night that I did that to you, and I know you probably did too. I think that would have made a big amends to me. Okay. Oh, well. Yeah, Coach, so you've had some really great uh, assistants through the years. Uh, one of them was one of our graduates who had gone on to have a, a fairly good career. What are some things you look for in assistants? Well, when you're trying to hire an assistant, you want somebody that's going to complement your type of coaching, okay? So you don't want somebody who's going to come in and want to change it, you know, well, you know, say, say you're a man-to-man -man coach, okay? You like man-to-man -man mostly. You don't want somebody that comes in and says, oh, yeah, I think we ought to go all zone. You know, I'm, I'm going to teach you how to go all zone. They want, you want to find somebody that has a lot of knowledge or as much knowledge that you can, and then let them compliment you, all right? And then are they going to be willing to do the things that, like, I I got to the point that I really hated to go to a gym and spend 10, well, let's say five weekends of doing nothing but sitting and watching games at, like, AU, right? And so I always found people who love to do that, and then we'll call me and say, come look at this person. I really like this person. Okay? So, and in the end of my career, I didn't have to do as much of that, so I always relied on my assistant. So you want to find an assistant um, that's eager to learn, that wants to work hard, um, that wants to, to do everything to help you in any way they can, and that fits in good with your program. All right? Anything else? So a couple of recommendations or suggestions for being a coach that you're willing to share. Start preparing to be a coach now. Okay, like I said, start preparing now. Start all your start your skills list. Start your drills list. Start the pros and cons. What's your philosophy? What is your have you ever written your philosophy down of coaching? Okay, I went back and read the philosophy I had. When I was, because we had a basketball coaching class, and I wrote it down, and I, you know, about half of it, you had to throw out the win, win of the first day, first year of coaching. But it's still good to go ahead and, and start your philosophy. You're going to change throughout your life of coaching. 
You know, everything is going to change, and it's going to change based on your players. I've had some players that, you know, I had some teams that were great pressure teams. You know, they, you could say, all right, we're going to go press 55, and they could just eat people alive. And then you had some teams that, you know, you had big people that couldn't press very well, and so they would just get flown by, so you weren't a pressing team that year. So you've got to be able to adapt to what players you have. Um, I think a lot of, some coaches always try to run the exact same system, no matter what kind of players, and that can be a, um, a detriment to them. Okay. What else? Dr. Frigg? Yeah, do you, do you recommend grad school for those that are thinking about it, it? Here's the thing. If you want to stay in college, and you're a college athlete, or you're in college right now, I recommend you stay in the college level and go be a grad assistant, go be a student assistant as a grad as a grad student, whatever it takes to get your foot in the door. Because once you leave college, it makes it a little bit harder to get back into college. I think um, at that level. So most people nowadays they stay as a grad assistant, um, and there's plenty of teams that need grad assistants. Okay, there's plenty of teams that need grad assistance. So don't, and, and you may have to, you may have to volunteer. Okay, so don't, don't be scared to volunteer. If, if you want to work at a, say, a North Carolina or someplace like that, you know, start, or you want to start at a big ACC, SEC, you know, say, I want to be a volunteer. What can I do to volunteer here? Some, there may be a job for you somewhere. You want your foot in the door, then you keep stepping up. It's not going to be an easy process. You're not going to go from college to being an ACC coach. It ain't going to happen. Okay? Anybody else? 